Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, yes, I'm back. <laughs> so yes, you may notice that I've been off for a few months, uh, had many things happening in my life and I had to take a break uh, mentally and physically. So now it's a bit better. So <laughs> I'm trying to film, um, yeah, to get back to filming new videos. So I have lots of new uh, videos to film and maybe you noticed but Guerlain has been really busy this year they've been uh, releasing lots of fragrances and there are again more fragrances to come so uh, I thought that today we could talk about the new Aqua Allegoria that they released uh, at the end of the year so these three new Aqua Allegoria and uh, maybe you know that uh, a new uh, fragrance also just arrived in uh, L'Arre la Matière collection so this is uh, the one about tobacco, I never remember the name, but tobacco honey, I guess, or honey tobacco. Okay, <laughs> so the one about tobacco and honey. And I, uh, I don't think that I will be doing a video dedicated to this one, but I did a post on Instagram. So if you're interested about my thoughts uh, about this fragrance, uh, please check it. And there is also a new, um, new, I'm not really sure, but okay, <laughs> a new fragrance uh, coming in uh, the La Rilla Matia collection. So this should be for November and this fragrance is uh, Fev Tabou. So apparently this fragrance is about uh, not Tonka beans, but cocoa beans. And I heard some rumors about this one, uh, saying that it was a, what it was, that it is a re-release of uh, Gourmand Coquin. So for the people who really enjoyed this fragrance that is sadly discontinued, maybe you should try this new one that is coming in November. So this um, Fev Tabou, I don't know why I, I can't remember these names, but okay, this Fev Tabou. Uh, okay, there is also a new uh, fragrance that arrived in uh, La Petite Robe Noire range. So I think this is the absolute version of this. So tell me if you're interested also for this one because I blind bought it. Um, okay, maybe this is a wise decision or not. I don't know, but okay, if you're interested about uh, this, tell me. Okay, so after filming the video, I noticed that there is um, one or maybe, no, more. <laughs> Lots of fragrances I forgot to talk about in the new fragrances coming uh, from Guerlain. So the first one I wanted to, to give you a few words about, of course, I'm going to get it to try it. Um, I, I'm really expecting this one. Uh, <laughs> I'm craving to smell it. This is the new Shalimar. So this is Shalimar uh, Millésime Iris. So it should arrive in France on the 18th. Um, so this is already next week for me. And uh, the other ones are... I hope to smell them, but for sure I won't have the money to buy them. <laughs> so I hope I'm not falling in love with them. Because this is the new... Um, extract range let's say from Guerlain which is taking all the notes from the Guerlinade to make a specific extract uh, fragrance so I think it will be in a separate range than the L'Arre et la Matière so for example they have the iris they have the I guess the vanilla the tonka beans the rose the jasmine uh, what else the bergamot I guess this is all the these are all the notes that you have in the Guerlinade and they will make specific extract for each of the uh, these notes but okay I heard a little bit about the price is it something like 500 euro 600 euro uh, too much for me so yeah but still I hope to smell them voila so I'll let you continue with the aqua allegorias but okay today we're going to talk about the new uh, aqua allegoria fragrances which arrived uh, in the forte range you know that they have this regular range and now they have the forte and uh, also another one is it the extra? I don't remember. <laughs> no, it's not an extra, but okay. Another version or again, that is more um, focused, let's say, on the quality of the ingredients. So this is not the case here. This is an, in the Forte version, which is supposed to be a more, um, let's say, a stronger version of the Aqua Allegorias. Uh, talking about that, I had an interesting questions I noticed in the comments uh, on my video about the Aqua Allegorias talking about the fact that these fresh fragrances, they don't last. Um, okay, just a few words about that. So you may know that you have top notes in fragrances, you have out notes and you have the base. 
and the reason why these fresh fragrances they don't last it's because they are lacking a strong base okay so usually the fragrance that we have for summer like aqua allegoria which has which are let's say um, more fresh fragrances they don't really last because they lack this strong base that you may have in um uh, let's say in fragrances like winter fragrances, they have a strong uh, base because your fragrance to last, they need this strong musky base, uh, woody base or uh, whatever, they need <laughs> this strong ingredient or amber, they need that in the base to be, uh, to have this lasting uh, power. But usually for summer, you don't prefer <laughs> amber or strong woody notes, you prefer fresh notes and these fresh notes they are more volatile than the notes that um, pass the most uh, quickly on your fragrances and they are also the notes that um, not evaporate but deteriorate, deteriorate <laughs> okay. uh, the most quickly when you have a fragrance. Um, if you uh, stock them well, uh, you store them really well in the dark, etc., they will uh, last longer for sure. But also um, with time, when the fragrance starts to deteriorate, deteriorate, this is not easy to say for me, but okay, <laughs> you understand the, the, what I wanted to say. Um, the first notes that are going to, to fade, let's say, are the fresh notes, so usually the, the, the bergamot or this kind of notes. Uh, are the ones that are more um, sensitive, um, fragile, let's say. Um, voilà. <laughs> okay, so this is my quick explanation about that. So here they decided to uh, release three new fragrances, but in the forte range, so you can expect them to last a bit longer, hopefully, because they should have a stronger base. Uh, so the first one uh, is Udyuzu, and then we had uh, Rose Palisandro and Bosca Vanilla. So I will start from my least favorite to my uh, favorite one. So yes, I had some, yes, some surprise <laughs> when I, uh, I tried them. Uh, I didn't know what to expect from Oud Yuzu, honestly. And uh, yes, and I had some surprises also for the other one. So let's start with Oud Yuzu. So Oud Yuzu, um, all these fragrances, they've been, um, created by the nose uh, Delphine Jelk, okay, so apparently Thierry Vasseur was not really involved in the creation of these ones, which happened from time to time, especially the new fragrances. Uh, I noticed that uh, for tobacco honey, for example, only Delphine Jelk worked on it, uh, which is more and more the case, I guess. I heard that uh, Thierry Vasseur was concentrating more and more on the let's say, the, the provi providing ingredients or on the quality <laughs> of the ingredients uh, on the harvest and, uh, the, the, I don't know, meeting the, the people who are harvesting the, um, their crops, harvesting the, the ingredients. And he's more than uh, on the quality of the ingredients and working on that. Uh, and then Delphine Jelk is more working on the formulas now and she's the one who's uh, creating the new fragrances. So there can be some exceptions, sometimes they are creating uh, both, uh, they are working both on new fragrances, but here apparently it was only uh, Delphine Jack. Okay, so Oud Yuzu. Let me smell it again. Yes, okay, so this one, this is really surprising because depending on when I tried it, depending on the, the weather especially, because it was, you should know that here in France it was super hot lately, uh, today is a bit better, we had some rain yesterday, but it's been super hot this summer and the first time I tried it I really hated it, the second time was okay and now it's a bit better, <laughs> maybe I'm getting used to it, I don't know, but okay, so this one is supposed to have the note of yuzu, uh, I guess oud also and the last one, I don't remember, I think it's cedar. Okay, it's getting a bit better now, okay. Because immediately in the opening, I really enjoy the note of yuzu. It's reminding me of grapefruit. It's really fresh. And I really like that. <laughs> I like fresh notes. I like uh, citrus notes. But the, the problem for me after that is that in its evolution, I, I got something that was really bothering me. It was coming to the fresh side of the yuzu, to the let's say the woody notes that you have in this fragrance, but in a way that was not pleasing for me. I had something in this like um, fresh marine woody accord, I don't know, something that reminded me of uh, 
uh, fragrances for men that you can find um, in stores. Um, yeah, in designer fragrances, and I really didn't like that. Yes, this is what I get. In its evolution, I don't really like that. So I feel like there's, for sure, for that price, uh, and to my nose, there's no real wood in there. There's something like a woody accord. But the problem for me is maybe the cedar note. The cedar note, I don't know what they did with that. It's maybe an accord, it's something, or cedar wood. There is something here that I don't really like, and it's reminding me of all these uh, plenty of designer fragrances for men that we got lately on the market. I, and I didn't find it super original in that sense, and maybe they try to attract more um, masculine uh, public for the Aqua Allegorias, maybe with this fragrance, but to me it just didn't work. I, I didn't find it really exceptional or interesting. Nothing new under the sun for me. This one was um, meh. <laughs> so, yes. That was more or less the, the bad surprise for me from this range. Okay, so tell me if you've tried this one, what do you think about it? I think it has, I don't know, a bit of smokiness today, which I like, but I don't know. This one really took me by surprise. It's really changing depending on the days I'm smelling it. So maybe one day I'm going to love it. I don't know, but so far it's not, it's not a love, okay? So, okay, this was the, the first one. And uh, the next one, let's try the rose. So, Rosa Palisandro. Okay, so Rosa Palisandro, put that from the paper too. Okay. So, this one was a good surprise for me. I didn't know at all what to expect from it. They had already several roses in that collection. They have Rosa Rosa that I really enjoyed, the first version. This rose and lychee is um, working really well. That was my favorite rose from their collection. Uh, they had pop rosa, rosa pop, something like that. That was okay to me. And they created also some other versions of the um, rosa rosa. So I guess they, it exists now in the regular version, the 40 version, the harvest version, which was not necessary to me, but okay. And uh, I think that's the second version also. It was losing all the, I don't know, the quality of this rose lychee that I really enjoyed from the first version. But okay, to me, the, this <laughs> the other versions of Rosa Rosa were not necessary. But this one, this one really took me by surprise because this is a spicy rose, but still sweet and joyful. And with the woody notes, it's working really, really well, I think. It reminded me somehow of the work of Sonia Constant. I don't know how, but there is something here that is reminding me of the way she treated her rose, uh, like in Rose Disparta or in... Um, uh, this one was for Boucheron, and the one in her range in Elaka was uh, Rose de Pushka. These ones, especially Rose de Pushka, is super strong. There is some saffron in it. There is also uh, some sweetness, maybe a lychee note, something like that. But there is, I don't know, some notes or the way it's treated here, something that is reminding me of these other fragrances without being that sweet <laughs> and fruity. But there is something a bit fruity in that rose. I'm wondering if she didn't use lychee or something like that. I'm surprised it's not listed in the note because I get something like a fruity rose somehow. Maybe it's the geranium that is bringing that. I don't know at all. I feel like there is something like maybe geranium or uh, patchouli, sandalwood. Something stronger in the base. So this fragrance, I guess, uh, should be lasting quite well. Um, I tried this one on my skin. Yes, and the last one also. And the longevity was quite good. Uh, you know that my skin is drinking fragrances, but it was quite good and really pleasing. So I, I think that this one is uh, completely unisex to me. I'm sure it will please men and women as long as you enjoy rose, but it's more, maybe more woody than rose or equally woody than rosy, <laughs> let's say. But it has something, a spiciness, it has something a bit fruity to me, to my nose, that makes it really interesting without being, 
I don't know, too, too useful or too young. I really like that. I don't know if it's the coriander maybe, um, mixed with the rose. I don't know. <laughs> there is something in that one that I really enjoy and reminding me of other roses. So this is why also I'm on the, the edge of buying it or not, because it's reminding me of uh, Rose Disparta, for example, that I have, even if they don't smell alike. OK, but there is something in it that is reminding me of these other roses. And uh, I don't know. I see. <laughs> but I really like that one. And it's pretty rare for a rose, you know that I'm quite picky with the rose, but I, I really like that one. And it was a good surprise because I, I really expected nothing about it. And uh, I didn't expect to like it, but I, I really do. <laughs> and the last one, which is, I guess, the most expected one, because this is a vanilla, so usually people really enjoy vanilla fragrances. <laughs> and this is, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, is it the first vanilla in this range, in this Aqua Allegoria range? As far as I remember, yes, but maybe there was one long time ago because, you know, they released lots of Aqua Allegoria and then they released and they, they get released and they disappear. But, you know, that's the life of Aqua Allegoria's is to be discontinued at some point. But OK, so let's try this one. Yes, OK. <laughs> and this one is the um, Bosca Vanilla. OK, so this Bosca Vanilla, of course, you have vanilla. But what I really enjoyed in that one is the, the opening, the fresh opening, the citrusy opening, which is really beautiful with something like bergamot, lemons, something fluffy. It's a fluffy citrusy vanilla that, of course, made me think about uh, Shalimar Cologne. OK, so if you are uh, nostalgic about Shalimar Cologne that has been discontinued, or if you liked Shalimar Cologne, but even if the Shalimar DNA is really <laughs> tamed, let's say in that version, you really didn't like this uh, Shalimar DNA and you're looking for an alternative, I think that you, you should definitely try Bosca Vanilla because if you, if you are in this um, situations, <laughs> let's say, uh, definitely I think that you will really enjoy Bosca Vanilla. So it has this beautiful uh, citrusy opening. The bergamot is spot on, maybe something like lemons. It's super fluffy. And with the vanilla, I don't know. I already have some whiffs of vanilla, of course, since the beginning, but with this citrus on top. And it has something solar also in it. Like, I don't know if it's salty or if it has a hint of ylang ylang or something like that. There is something like, um, solar vanilla, like you are close to the beach, close to the sea. There is this vibe in this fragrance. So definitely smells like a summer, <laughs> a summer vanilla, which is really pretty. There is something that is reminding me of sand also in this one. This may be immortal because I know that immortal usually, this is something that is working well to bring this kind of sand note to to fragrances, to me, at least, to my nose. <laughs> I don't know. But I think th this is it, yeah. OK, I realized as I was editing the video to post it that the end was missing, so my camera stopped while I was talking and the whole end of the video is missing, so OK. So <laughs> let's try to conclude about these new releases. So quickly, uh, the first one, Oud Yuzu, was quite a disappointment for me because I really enjoyed the fresh opening that was reminding me of grapefruit because of the Yuzu, of course, but the woody base for me was not good. I don't know. There was something there that was um, that was bothering me and that I didn't like. And especially also the soapy evolution. I, I didn't really like that. So, OK, it's a pass for me. <laughs> the second one was a really good surprise for me. The rose is really pretty. I thought that the use of spices uh, was giving it more definition and especially the use of geranium here. I really like that. So usually it's a tricky note for me, but here it was bringing some uh, spiciness and sweetness, also almost something like a fruitiness to the, the fragrance that reminded me a bit of lychee and I, I really like that. So, and the woody base is beautiful too. So this one was, um, yeah, <laughs> a good success for me. And the last one, so this one, the, the Bosca Vanilla one, uh, I really liked it. Uh, I think that if you love uh, salty, solar vanilla, 
you're definitely going to enjoy this one. The only thing is that it's not super unique in the sense that I feel like there are al already some other fragrances on the market that are smelling like this one. Uh, like, I don't know, Couleur Vanille, I think you have one also uh, in Theo Cabanel, uh, there is also Chalimar Cologne, but if you want to replace something like Chalimar Cologne that is all discontinued, unfortunately, I think that could be a good alternative to it. So voila, <laughs> that was my quick con conclusion and my thoughts about this uh, new release. I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye! <laughs>